All right, let's get into some discussion now. Welcome everybody again. Welcome, Michael. Good to see you. I see people writing endlessly. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you've been writing. <laughs> Mama Raya daughter, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sweating here Whew, because <laughs> this is a huge responsibility. So before I even get into it, because you did an awesome job with the um with the law. But before I get into that, I want to talk about the implication of what we're doing here. In Ezekiel, that we read last week, Ezekiel 20, it talks about, you know, it says, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there I would plead with you face to face, like I pled with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, said the Most High, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of covenant. And I will purge out the rebels from among you and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they, they shall not enter into the land and you shall know that I am Tatan Zambi. Um, so there are so many instances that every time the people of the most high go back into the uh, into the land that they pull out the books of the law and they read the books of the law let me give you a couple of instances in Joshua it says uh Joshua 1 8 it says he shewed his word unto, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. I pulled up the wrong. Joshua 1, 8. It says, the book, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shall thou have good success. In 1 Maccabees 3.48, it says, uh, let me just, oh, yeah. Wherefore, the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Maspah, over against Jerusalem, for in Maspha was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their head and rent their clothes and laid open the books of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So it was, it was prophesied even in the book of Maccabees when they brought open, when they brought the books of the law, when they were coming back into the land, they brought the books of the law and they laid open the books of the law. And they said that the heathen had already started to try to paint themselves, their likenesses. In other words, to usur usurp, because that's who they are. They, they are usurpers. And even back then, they were trying to usurp. Um. Second Kings 22, verse 8 says, And Hilkiah, the, the high priest, said unto Saphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the books to Saphan, and he read it. 
and and he came to the king and brought the king word again and said thy servant had gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it unto the hand of them that do the work and have the oversight of the house and so found the scribe showed the king saying hekiah the priest that delivered me it had delivered me a book and Saphan read it before the king and it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he he rent his clothes and the king commanded Hekai the priest and Ahikim the son of Saphan and the son of uh, Mayaka and Saphan the scribe a servant of the king saying, go ye, inquire of the Lord for me, for the people and all Judah concerning the words of the book that is found in the, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that is written concerning us. So we see there are times always times that they pulled out the books of the law. We, we, we know of the instance in Nehemiah where they pulled out the books of the law when they came back from the Babylonian captivity. So here we are. <laughs> Fulfilling prophecy. We didn't even, you know, we're, we're just seeking to understand the most high, but we are literally walking in prophecy where are the actors in this in this in this play it is so surreal that is astounding that the most high told us that this would happen thousands of years ago in ezekiel 20 he says i will bring you in the wilderness of the people the wilderness is a place where he takes you to himself to commune with you to speak with you he says, I will put my laws in your heart. And, and this is literally what we're doing. We're bringing out the books of the law. The, the books of the law is not only um, <laughs> legal. It is the constitution. You, you heard me say this before. It is the constitution of the nation of Isolele. So once you hear the books of the law, you can't unhear it, first of all. And then you are responsible for everything that is in there. He said that he winks in time of ignorance, the most high wink. But now we're get, he's getting serious. This is not play play anymore. We have pulled out the books of the law like our ancestors and we're reading in them. This is the bond of covenant that we're going into. We're, we're at that place in Ezekiel 20, where he says, I will read out the rebels from among you. Because once you know this law, like I said, you can't unknow it. And then you're responsible. So he that will show, depending on whether you listen or you abide by the books of the law, whether you want to go into his land, because he's saying, if you if you agree, like our father said, everything you said, we will do. If you say that, then you get into the land. But if you don't, if you don't want to abide by these rules, it's okay. It's all good. It's your choice. But you don't get into this land. So literally, we're walking under the rod into the bond of covenant. Because once we hear this, we make the choice whether we want to go forward or we want to go backward. That is a huge responsibility. So we need to take this seriously, you know, that we're literally walking in prophecy. So I'm going to stop there for now because <laughs> unless somebody else talk. Oh. Get that. Thank you, Mama Royal Daughter. I, I think Ray is trying to say she should just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> she
She'll be back. She'll be back. She'll be back. <laughs> Let me see. Do I see any other hands? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. You're right, Mama Royal. You're right. Okay. Am I missing a hand? Let me see. Um, okay. Ray and Vanessa, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Tammy, everyone, I just wanted to say, uh, Royal Daughter, that was so on point. I mean, talk about stirring the pot of all the good stuff that's in there. I mean, just it, it, it was something that Ray and I were talking about even last week. Mostly everything you said, we were talking about it. You know, doing doing this, I'm so glad, Matavi, that Father uh, Bible spoke to you to do this because um you know, I'm I'm sitting in our church service uh, with my father on Sunday, and I'm looking at, sadly, I'm looking at what they call the Ten Commandments, and it broke my heart. It literally broke my heart. I was so in tears. I mean, literally in tears. If this is what they want us to do, and I, I believe we talked about this last week about how they don't they, they don't want us to follow these commandments because they know if we follow them to the T, he is going to show up and show out for his people. Period. He's going to show up and show out for us because you're doing as I command. So you 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 have the nerve. I'm sitting here looking through the King James. And if I tell y'all how many times the King James version of the Ten Commandments has changed since 1965, I think it was, up until now, it's changed at least 13, 14 times. Mm -hmm. And every single time, this is the part that bothers me, every single time it's less and less and less and less and less. And, 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 and then you just have one sentence. Put them first. That's it. And then we move on to the next. They never talk about loving one another. They never talk about loving God. They never talk about loving Sonini Nanini. They talk about putting him first. But we can put a lot of things first that we don't love. Some of us have jobs that we don't love. But we get up in the morning and we get it dressed and we, and we take it out and we go to work. It's not because you want to be there. It's because, well, this is an obligation. I don't believe that loving Sonini Nanini is an obligation. Captain Zombie wants to love you. He even says, you know, love me. And if you're going to love me, love me with your whole heart. Love me with your mind, your spirit, your soul. Give me everything. And I don't know if any of y'all have been in relationships where people just want you around because they can use you. People want you around because you hold a space and that's all you do. But when somebody truly loves you, I mean, if all they got is one White Castle hamburger, they're going to split it with you. <laughs> If, if your mom and your daddy put you out, their, their door is open to you. And, and this really speaks of covenant and speaks of relationship. But I, but I, I even went on to um, um, Akimi Bantu and left a message for, um, uh, for anybody that came along to read. But what I found so interesting was that Sonini's voice was heard by everyone. It wasn't, you, you had no excuse. None, none whatsoever. Not that I didn't hear or whatever. You, we didn't have that. You heard his voice and you heard what he said. And so you can't go running back and say, well, I didn't hear that or I didn't understand. No, you understand completely what's being said. And, and that, that just moves my heart because it's a personal thing. It's not just all of us coming together. It, it even extended outward of the community and into you, into what you do in your personal time. It, it's like they say, it, uh, does a tree make noise if it falls in the wood? Does it, did, did it make a sound? You know, uh, uh, that kind of thing. You heard what the man said. And this is what he said, and we need to obey. In Geta. Oh, my. yes, yes, yes. Mr. Elder Vanessa, I saw your comment and I was just thinking, I hope people are reading this. You know, you said it so well on the commentary there on the channel. I was like, I hope people just take the time and let this sink in individually. 
first. And that's why I keep repeating, you know, that they heard the voice of the Most High. He solely had the voice of the Most High. I mean, just think about it. Over maybe two million people. Because the Bible tells us, the scriptures in the Bible tell us that there were 603,500 and something men that were part of the Exodus. And they saw this cloud and they freaked out. They were like, Moses, you go deal with the Most High. Don't let him come down. He's going to wipe us out. And the Most High said, uh-uh, I'm coming down. I want you to hear my voice. And however many there were, they were all witnesses. And they were told, you will tell these laws to your children, and they will tell them to their children's children. Why do you think the Most High did that? So that when they hide these writings, we will be given the writings by our parents, our grandparents. And that is what has kept us going, even before we found these writings. Why is it that you go anywhere in Africa, even here, I'm not saying it only happens in Africa, why is it that you find people following these laws and some of them have never even read the so-called scriptures why do people respect their elders their parents why do people look at you funny when they hear you cursing out and mentioning jc or the most high or things like that it's because not only did the most high put those laws in us but they've also been passed down through generations it's super important all right mama emma go ahead well see me everyone this is awesome um yes <laughs> um and starting my um research and, and definition um, I remember years ago when I was learning to uh, study the scriptures and I found this group called Inductive Bible Study, which is a layman's term for um, what they, how they teach uh, preachers um, to study uh, supposedly uh, in seminary. But uh, instead of using the uh, the large words like etymology and all those kinds of things, they just said induct a Bible study and you learn to use the Bible and study the Bible uh, without uh, commentaries, without uh, what the preacher said, what the evangelist said, all those kinds of things. So uh, I was... Um, um, teaching a, uh, well, was presenting a class to uh, the youth. Okay, some of them were elementary, some of them were teenagers, and some were younger, but because that's how it was as far as the classes that was made available to you. So anyway, uh, we were studying um, this book called How to Study Your Bible. And the story was, um, uh, in the Old Testament um, was one of the examples and it was talking about Sennacherib and uh, what they were doing when, um, uh, what's his name was building, the, Nehemiah was building a wall. And um, so the word came up, boy, you know, do not take the name of uh, your creator and uh, make it do not use this name, do not make it void. And, um, and so usually, you know, over the years, you thought, okay, that meant, you know, you don't curse. You don't say uh, G-O-D-D-A-M. Uh, that's what I thought it meant. And that's what most of the people at that particular instance, that's what they thought it meant. But then as we was breaking it down, there's teaching us like, it doesn't mean that. And now even 
even today it's like uh -uh, i got some more definitions <laughs> like oh my <laughs> just like you said you know we uh have been called and we are uh the characters in this thing when before we thought it was just the people in the book in the bible uh in the scriptures or or the uh, the church you know we were just you know bystanders kind of and 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 you quote unquote lucky if you part of the group who is with these other people so anyway um this is what i found today and uh, again it, it goes back to genesis 1 uh, hey, where's my papers? Okay, here we go. Uh, void uh, means empty. It's a Hebrew word. I mean, boho, boohoo. Uh, and I came up on that, and I'll, I'll get back to the definition. But when I was looking for... Uh, the scripture uh, that's in the, the book of the law that we are studying, researching, um, I couldn't find that exact thing. So I put in the second commandment and the second commandment that they gave me, it says, uh, one of them was, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth you shall now bow down to them or serve them for I the Lord your God am a jealous God this is the, okay so you know we read that before that's Exodus 20 46 okay the other one uh, for the second commandment that it gave me like uh, where is it Okay, it's on this other page, just a second. I got, I ended up with 36 pages on, on void. <laughs> so, excuse me. Uh, oh, shucks. It's okay, Mama, I might just look for it. We'll come back to you. Oh, okay, here it, yeah. here it is. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the word void has been used to mean unoccupied or vacant since the year 1300. It came from the Anglo-French and Old French void day or voodi, meaning empty or hollow. Okay, and what caught my attention when I was reading these definitions was what has happened, what happened in, in Genesis, uh, what the enemy did, uh, and how he usurped uh, the earth realm and and the humans and then what we're faced with today on the continent of Africa and they and they have said historically that we discovered you you know that no people were there and that it was empty and I just I, I mean it's just so much and and then again understanding that the word void the way we were taught a way I was taught and the way these definitions are saying is that our God doesn't have any authority. He doesn't have an authority. And see, again, it goes back to what he's been showing me all along. The enemy is upset with humans because he deceived us in believing that he is the most high. And once we, we were gradually coming away from that, and so as we kept, gradually came away from that, what would he do? He would cause bad things to come up on. I'm going to cause this to happen to you because I am the God and, you, and you're no longer serving me as God. And, and that's, that's where we are right now, especially where we are right now. That Like a royal daughter said, you know, this is so important to know that we have heard the law. We know we have heard his voice. We know what to do before the most high had mercy. That's what he had. And we're still under mercy. Some of us. Um, but mercy has ran out for some of the others. And time is running out with that. The grace of mercy is running out. So again, we have to understand 
that the Most High gave authority to human, not mankind, not men, M-E-N. He didn't give authority to Esau. He didn't give authority to uh, Esau's children. He didn't give authority to those, uh, the Dutch and the Netherlands, and he didn't give authority to them to rule in this earth realm. And with authority comes power, but he usurped the authority and used his negative power against us. And so the Most High is saying, you got to stop using my name and as taking my name in vain. It is not in vain. You are the recreators by coming together according to my plan, man and woman coming together and making another human in the likeness. And so this is all, all the things that I was saying, and, and it's a lot. Um, like I said, I'm going to stop there and I'll try to uh, find my page. <laughs> I don't know what happens when I do this. So yeah, this is this is so important that we understand these words. The English language has us all befuddled, and and again has to do with what the what our language, what the original language sounded like to to the enemy. He couldn't get it because it's it what it didn't belong to him. The word wasn't for him. The sounds were not for him. They are for the Most High. So, uh, and and his in his creation, and 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 the earth. And like I said last week, you know, we see um, those kingdoms, those Bantu kingdoms, rising up and doing what they naturally do. They are making sounds and vibrations, and they are dressing in their original uh, garments. They're going back to nature the way the Most High created it. And, and, and the rest of the world is like, you know, running around talking about all this other stuff, you know, what the enemy is doing. Well, we need to know what he's doing, but we need to know that he can't, he can't do what he was doing originally because his power has become void and useless. He doesn't have power. He doesn't have authority, first of all. So if he doesn't have authority, then he don't have power. So that's the key thing. We got to know that he doesn't have authority to do what he says he has authority to do. Uh, I was looking at the, a video of the of the uh, elections that's going on on the on the continent. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and then the crazy stuff that's going on over here, you know, the elections. That's like, and 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 if we don't understand that, what's the scripture say? The whole earth moans and groans, waiting for the manifestation of who? It, it can't be, you know, who already is manifested. It has to be the ones who was given dominion and authority in this earth realm. And so, in Geta. Oh, thank you, Mama Rodot. I mean, thank you, Mama Emma. Wow, wow, wow. You know, we have to get a little bit more into this detail about authority, usurping of power and authority, because this is at the heart of this commandment, you know? And, and I, like, I like what Mama Emma said, you know, when you study the scriptures, it's good that you don't look at commentary or books, you know, you fast, First, begin by studying it yourself and relying on the Most High and the Wonder, the Holy Spirit, to teach you, to give you revelation. And then when you're done with that, now you can look at the commentaries to see what else somebody else may have picked up. And remember, most of the commentary, most of the books, most of the publications out there on our forefathers on Isolele were written by the Gentiles. So they're not a reliable source, okay? But you will find some things that they put out there 
that will be helpful for you to understand. Let me go straight into it, then I get to you, Mama Rao daughter. This commentary in this book of the law, there are some good points that are made there. Uh, I touched on a little bit of them, but I want you to see, let me just point out, let me see, is it two of them? Okay, I'll point out several of them real quick. And I know you have your notes, but I'll share this on the screen as well. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Ray, let me know. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Uh, it should be the page that says by the first commandment. Is that the one that you're seeing? Ray? Yeah. Yes, okay. I can see it. Okay. So look at this. By the first commandment, the Most High establishes a government. The first commandment was love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, all your soul. Um, so he establishes a government amongst men, which he makes supreme in all things. But as every government, besides laws and the sovereign power where they emanate, must also have officers by whom the laws shall be administered. So those officers must derive the authority from the sovereign in legal form. So all officers act in the name of him from whom they derive the authority. Then it gives an example. In the several American states, the official acts of most state officers are done in the name of the people of the state. For example, if you go to a court case, like the recently concluded court case between the former President Trump and the state or the people of the state of New York, that's how the case is titled. It's not Trump versus an individual. So the state of New York is acting in the name of the people of the state. The name of the state. So in this government of Tatanzambi, we act in the name of Tatanzambi by the authority of Tatanzambi. Okay. In the here it says officers of the federal government act in the name of the US of America. Uh, in the monarchies of Europe, official acts are done in the name of the sovereign. So you'll hear people saying, in the name of the queen or the king, you know, attorneys in the UK are called the Crown Council, right? Why are they being called the Crown's Council? Because they are supposed to be under the king who is referred to as the Crown. Um, and so on about uh, societies acting, you know, it says official acts are done in the name of the sovereign and in voluntary societies and corporations, the officers act in the name of the society or the corporation. When you say I'm the CEO or I'm an employee of this company or this organization, if you come to my house and you inspect my electric meter, you show me your identity. If you're a policeman and you show up and you stop me on the street, you show me your identity so that I know you're acting on behalf of that organization that you represent. Now, take a look at what else is said here. Um, oops, did I go too far? I think I went a little bit too far. Let's see if I can get back to that page. Okay, yeah, I need to go to this one. So here, Another point is made. It therefore appears that to act in the name of anyone is to act by his authority. And to act in the name of the Most High is to act by his authority. Hence, taking the name of the Most High in vain is taking his authority without being authorized. This is what that usurping means without being authorized. It is attempting to govern, to lead, to be in charge, 
without being called to that office. In any matter wherein the Most High has declared a law and appointed an administrator of the law. So this usurping the power is attempting to govern without being called to that office. It follows, therefore, that every form of government among men, <laughs> which was not instituted of the Most High, is a usurpation. Why? Because all these governments amongst men are supposed to be instituted only by the Most High. He's the one who has the right to govern what he created. The scripture is given there. And that every exercise of the proper functions of government under it is a taking of the name of the Most High in vain, as every exercise of functions not proper to government is tyranny. Now, let me just read and I'll stop at this seventh one. Priests made by the authority of man and not called of the Most High. Priests who constantly profess to have received no dispensation from the Most High and who deny that he has revealed himself to any for hundreds of years do constantly administer in his name as boldly as though they were sent by him. This commentary is just basically saying, if the Most High didn't call you, if he didn't appoint you, you're usurping that power. So you're using that name in vain. I could be here all day. Oh my, I see more hands going up. Okay, let's get a mama royal daughter. Let's get a mama uh, Matizola and then Michael. And get, uh, you know, the whole concept of the name, the name, we know, you know, literally, even those of us who came over on the way and were disconnected from our people, we always understood that there is very there is a name is very important because the name has power. The name is the character of the person. The name is the spirit. So we don't name a person. We don't name flesh and blood. We name the spirit that is in that person. You know, when Isaiah, when that woman touched him, he said, I felt virtue leave me. He felt power leave him. The name is power, is spirit. So now we're talking about, you know, if my people who are called by my name, so there is a literal people that are still called by his name and that name is powerful. So we come to the Bantu people, the Abantu. This, this, this word itself has so many interpretations and every one of them is spiritual. So my favorite one is Abba, which means father. Some 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 cultures say Baba, Tata, Dada, but Abba means the supreme father. That's why he says, "Call no man father." It, 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 the word is not father, but call no man Abba, which is his name. So when you say Abba, we know who we're referring to: the Alpha and the Omega. Ntu, the word Ntu means to rule, a ruler. So literally our name, the people who are literally called by his name, Abantu, means the people of the Supreme Father who is the ruler, the Supreme King. Now, because he made this world, he is sovereign, and he is supreme. You know, we've been on a journey here that we had no idea where the Moanda was taking us. 
And so we started talking to about the books of Adam and Eve, the testaments of Adam and Eve. And in that book, he told Adam the plan that would lead till today, the plan to bring Adam and his bloodline back to him because that bloodline is started, is the bloodline that comes from the most high. He said, I am the root and the stem of Jesse. So that bloodline comes directly from him. So he told Adam, I have a plan to bring you back to be the ruler, to be king. But it is, it's going to take some time. Just hold on. So then we read uh, Testaments of Le Levi and Judah. And they told us Levi got the law. So he was the supremacy. The Most High divided his rulership on the earth because he made children who were carbon copies of him, who in his image and in his likeness. So he cannot make paupers or, or slaves that are born in his name, in his image, in his likeness. Because he is king, anybody who is made in his image and his likeness is a king as well. So he gave Levi the supremacy, which is the law. And he gave Judah the sovereignty, which is the right to rule. And so they even told us that, remember, he told our father Adam that this is a plan that's going to take you to this point. And so uh, Levi told us in his, in, in his um, prophecy, he prophesied that at some point, the Gentile, there was going to be a, a Gentile rule. It's called the time of the Gentile. And Isaiah said, till the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So in the beginning of the time of the Gentiles, um, Paul was sent to preach to the Gentiles. And uh, before I before I go further, there was a twelfth disciple in Acts uh, one twenty six. They picked a twelfth disciple because the number twelve is very significant, especially when it comes to government. So his name was M was Matthias. He was the twelfth disciple that replaced um, Judas. And so he sent the disciples. He says, "Go speak to my people." And what do you tell them? Tell them the kingdom of God has come. Why? That's all they need to know. Because they know the law. They know the plan. They know the testimony. They know the prophecies. When Stephen died, Stephen sp spoke the whole law. He knew. And like you said earlier, he's a teacher to your children. So they will know. So that when I say I come and I say to them, um, the kingdom of, of God has come. They know, they know they the whole law comes back into their mind. But what do I when you say that to a Gentile, it means nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. So he said, Paul, you go and speak to the Gentiles because you know he gave he gave Paul gifts. But among the Gentiles were Isolele. So he, he, he designated Paul. I'm going to give you uh, uh, to speak to the Gentiles and speak to Isolele as well. Because Paul was very educated. He was educated in the law. He was just following the wrong path and the Most High put him back on the path. But he knew Paul knew how to speak to both of them at the same time. And Isaiah, being a righteous king, he did not give the Gentiles the time of the Gentiles 
so that um so that they could rule he never gave them rulership he gave it to levi and judah thousands of years before because he knew what would happen but he gave them the ability because he's a righteous and zombie in other words at this time in the end time in the judgment time he will say to them, look, I gave you the ability to, to rule, to not to rule, but to stand up, to fall in line with my people. Because he says there are children that are born under the law, which is us. There's going to be the grafted in, which is my children that I brought back. And then those that are not born under the law, which is the Gentile. But I gave you an opportunity to come into the fold. But what did they do? They ravaged. They ravaged because he said that the, that Satan and his children must do because he was a liar from the beginning and a murderer. So they must do the works of their father. No matter where you put them, no matter where you put them, they were given a chance to walk into the fold and say, Kumbaya. But they colonized, they slaughtered, they destroyed, they do, they did everything. And then they took, they had the nerve to take <laughs> rulership. Oh yeah, I got rulership. I they they said that they were given authority to change the laws, as you said, and the times. They have been given their time to prove themselves. And all they did was kill and plunder and rape and steal and everything else. So they, the Tatan Zambi, when he executes judgment, they can't say anything because they have had their chance to walk into the fold. So um, I wanna step back from the, um, the book of the law for a second on page 19 and read the last two paragraphs six, seven, and eight. It says, though God had founded his government in love and made the chief sanction of his law, we are not allowed for one moment to imagine that he will not punish sin, nor that he will look upon it with degrees of allowance. For in the same breath, he tells us that he is a jealous or righteous God, visiting the iniquities of all that hate him. Not as some have said, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the innocent posterity, but upon their children who abide in their sin. Often it happens that though the father alone may have committed the sin, the children are beneficiaries. If the father has obtained prosperity by fraud and violence, the children who inherit it receive it subject to the curse. And unless they make reparations for the iniquity, must expect to be visited with the wrath of God as for a sin done in their own persons. So I believe you are with that, you know, because uh, this is the judgment that is coming upon the people who think, who have usurped what they think is their right. And they speak it as is their right. And get that. Wow. Woo. <laughs> Ray, I feel you. <laughs> I, Mama Rao, daughter, you are a flame today. You are a flame. I, I don't even know how to. Guys, I had goosebumps. I can. I wish you would see them, but I had goosebumps. Wow. Mama Machizola, go ahead. And then Michael, and then Mama Emma. Yep. Okay, I just got a, a few comments. I just want to highlight um, from what you... Um, thank you for that, um, Brother Mandavi. This is, this is amazing. And as Royal said, it's amazing that it's surreal that we are sitting here doing this. But when I think about it, what we're doing is what 
it is what heaven already established that we would do. For instance, when Elisha prayed, remember when Elisha prayed that it would rain? You know what he was doing? He was doing what heaven already established. Because if you read that scripture, before Elisha said it will rain, the Most High said it will rain. He said, I will send rain on the earth. And then Elisha comes and prays for rain. And then rain comes. So this is what is happening in this I, I can't wrap my mind around the fact that we are doing this, but heaven decreed, heaven established. It is written in the heavenly tablets, family, that we would do this at this hour, at this moment in time. We are not doing this because um, we just were so clever and smart and insightful. No, <laughs> it was already planned. Have, have already planned that we would do this. So I just want to put that out there. So to what of uh, the book of the law, man, this is so huge. I was meditating on this yesterday and uh, I would need to write out a whole thing to, to completely give what Tata Zombie gave me. But the beginning of, I'm just going to start here. The beginning, our covenant, the covenant of Tatan Zambi that he made with his people. Your covenant sits on the book of the law. You cannot separate the book of the law from the covenant that Tatan Zambi gave his people. There is no covenant for the people of the Most High without the book of the law. So, this is about Tatan Zombie's righteous order of governing. You hear people saying all the time, we don't want government, especially here. But these people are telling you who they are. That's all. They're, <laughs> they're telling you who they are because Tata governmental authority, government is Tatan Zombie's idea. You cannot have order without government. Tatan Zambi established government family and in establishing government, here is what he said. He said of Yesaya and my government, Tatan Zambi's government, he said, shall sit on Yesaya's shoulder. And then he came back and he said, and now I'm making him the head of the church and over everything, he's the head. He's the head and everything is subject to his rule and his authority. So, you know, we, this is so, there is so much in this. When, and I wanna say this about this usurping. You, when you usurp something, when someone usurps something, they act without lawful authority, as Elder Mathavi said. You act without lawful authority when you usurp. The usurp, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to stop because family, uh, I work close to government. So, but anyway, when you usurp, you act without lawful authority. That makes you a tyrant. Tyrants act. Those two terms are synonymous, tyrants and usurpers. Because usurpers often act like tyrants. They don't want governmental order. They don't want order. They violate laws. They violate the order. They try to remove everything. And as far as you know what we see in the church. When, when you see the priests, these people, Tatan Zombie never gave Gentiles the rule. He, he, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He made a covenant with his people and he said, my covenant 
I will not break nor alter the word that has gone forth out of my mouth. So how is it that the Gentile rules the, I'm going to use the word church, even though people don't like that term, but I'm going to use the word church. How is it that the Gentiles rule the church? They rule the, the, the church because they usurp the authority of the church. But now they rule the church without the order or governing of Tatan Zambi. They do it in their own way, according to their own laws, according to their own everything. And what did Isaiah, and so now that brings to light what Isaiah said. Now I understand why Isaiah said, and he, yes, he was talking to these priests, priests, these popes, all these people that call themselves this and that, in the religious um, circles of this world that Tatan Zambi has not called them or commissioned them or given them the authority. He said, now I understand why he said, he said, I'm going to say to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Why? Because you were never given authority. The authority is a heavenly authority. It, the authority does not originate in the earth and then goes to heaven. No, the authority comes from heaven to the earth. And all through the scripture, you can see that zombie anointing his, those that he called, anointing them, giving them, yes, they can use the name. They can use the name, but that does not mean Tatan Zambi called them. Did he not say many are called, but few are chosen? This is so powerful, family. I could just go on and on about this, but I'm going to stop right here and give someone else a chance to comment. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, get up. Hey, get up. Wow. Hey, get up. Keep it going. Hey, get up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, keep going. <laughs> Okay. Oh my goodness, Michael! Keep on, keeping on. Go ahead. Oh, same thing. I tell you, um, I first of all being happy to go behind. Oh man, that is almost impossible. I'm revving, still revving on, on uh, what Miss uh, Matazula was saying. My spirit is scared off of that. I'm going to the book of the law. I tell you, I never really uh wanted to pay any attention to it uh, coming up. I ran it across it a few times because it was associated with Egypt and me coming up, everything that was associated with Egypt, the onks and all this stuff. To my own uh, understanding and derailment from it, having the father, that was uh, that's a past, was, uh, you know, I just made the choice and said, well, if the most high took them out of Egypt, every then, you know, he didn't want them knowing what, you know, they were being taught, you know, we got the gods and the, all this uh, worshiping stuff and acceptance of whatever. But as you grow, you know, he give you more in the overstanding as you uh, have experiences in life so that you can get it. As I learned and delved into the, the word a little more, understanding where where they came from with Abram. Well, Joseph, he spent a whole lot of time in Egypt, and I don't think the Most High would have sent Abram there, or, well, twice, let alone that, that young nation that he, told him that he was uh that he talked to and said he was gonna make a great nation. Well, it kinda it kinda did it in Egypt. So what I'm saying is for me hitting here with you all, we we happen to come and start studying Book of the Law. I don't really think things are happenstance anymore. Because I, I tend to listen to them in the last couple of years and whatever happened happens and it's always been knowledge, knowledgeable, profitable, uplifting, everything. 
So I smiled last week when we touched on the book of the law because in my in my own uh, journey, certain things I run across and then I say to myself, I ain't ready for that. And they, they come back. And this is one of the things that come back. And uh, I hear and understand it more. But it gave me a, a better understanding of the things that I was kind of happy about. You know, Egypt isn't um, isn't like this this grunted, thrown away place. It's pretty important. I haven't really got the total gist of it, but that's it's pretty important. So with the Joseph thing and me, I said, well, with Joseph being down there, for so long and things ran how they did. Evidently it was great until afterwards, until he had to bring them out. Well, what were they probably following? Because Joseph definitely came up under uh, you know, the the laws of the most high because of who his father was and who his grandfather was. And he definitely showed out for him when he was in Egypt during all that time and then being able to run that whole joint. I come to start to understanding that he brings us these these scriptures, these books later on in life, and like we're saying, we're we're who he's talking to. You know, we're the we're the actors of this. And you know, you never know how small your little contribution is really great. Because it just took, you know, one thing from you, you elder, and uh and also uh Mama Royal daughter. For me to say, oh, I'm I'm going to jump out in in a whole nother world in which I haven't before, just totally on being obedient. So that kind of is another thing that makes me introduce my little two cents because you never know whether your your thought is something that he gives you to give to somebody else, and it is a part of the big puzzle. You know, I don't know what position I play in 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 his picture, but I'm in it, and I could be a period at the end of the things or dust on his on his art i'm a part of it and it's all right by me so i also i just i gotta say one thing that just killed it for me and uh it's the part in the commandment where it says uh he of course you talk about the most highest above all and is the, the only true god the only just and upright king over all it's certain words that just can't be added to or taken from he alone has the right to rule and in his name only he to whom he granted it whosoever <clears throat> is not chosen to him the same as a usurper and unhope i kind of get why they keep uh, taking stuff out over the years because that's very empowering. Power. It's also very straight to the point. He's the only one. You know, he, there's no one, there's no one to get power above him. He's the king. It's kind of straight out. So if we did know that, you know, how would we be? But in his plan, his plan is perfect. And uh, like someone said, we're living in a time to work. We are supposed to see it and we live by it because it wouldn't pay it wouldn't make no it wouldn't make me think two things of it if he hadn't put it in us already. So I really appreciate you know us touching on this. I, I mean I'm all all into this book and get them. He gets a Oh my, oh my, oh my. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mike. Uh, Mama Emma, before I come to you, um, let me give you a commercial break. This one is coming live as we are speaking. I just saw my phone flash and it was a message somebody sent uh, on the channel. And I'm actually going to share this message for the benefit of those who watch us later on to know that you know, we are listening to them. And I want to share this to you guys so that you see that this discussions are having an impact. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. <clears throat> All right. Ray, can you see my screen? 
Yes, I can. All right. So, gentleman by the name of Joseph, I blocked his name and email. Um, two minutes ago, this is just two minutes ago, I salute you, the pe great people of the Most High. I kindly request for how I can access the book of the law in its original form, if possible. Soft and hard copies. He wants <laughs> it all. <laughs> I come from Eldoret. This is a town in Western Kenya. Mm. But in this unique dispensation of reawakening my team, and I are adjusting to this unfolding phenomenon before the great father, having encountered very challenging <laughs> experiences. Wow. <laughs> All praises to the Most High. We will get that copy to him, and may he use it in the best manner possible. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, this whole week, it's just been like the Most High has definitely been moving in our midst. Um, I think it was... I don't remember if it was Tuesday or Monday, whatever day it was. But Mama Matuzola and I were just exchanging some messages. And she drops this one on me. And I'm like, whoa, okay. She dropped Proverbs 11.9. Putting it on the chat, I'll read it. An hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. Through knowledge. Here we are talking about the knowledge in the book of the law and people writing us from all corners of the world asking for knowledge. Ingeta. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Tatan Zambi. All right, Mama Emma, go ahead. <clears throat> Oh, yes, 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 yes. All oh, praises to the most high. Okay. <laughs> First comment, uh, comment on what you just said, and, and we said this before. Uh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But what we are doing to combat that, once we, uh, once I learned this, is that study to show yourself approved unto who? Unto the most high. Unto Tatan Zami Sanini Nanini. Okay, so uh, I, I came up with some questions, but they're kind of uh, rhetorical. <laughs> okay, uh, when we was reading, uh, that when you read through the, your presentation, which was awesome as usual, Daniel 7 25, 27. He shall speak great words against. Okay, who is speaking these great words? Okay, changing laws and times. Who changes laws and times? Okay, then then it was a. Uh, uh, I didn't get the scripture on this one, but it shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting. Who shall be given to the who? Who gave the people of the most of the saints of the most high? It says shall be given to the people. Who is the given? Who's the one giving these people? Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom? And all dominions shall serve and obey him. Okay, what, what's the scripture said? The whole world has been, see, been deceived and obey and serve him. I know uh, Nikosi is like, yeah, we were singing all them praises to JC. <laughs> At least that's what we thought we was doing. But as again, as the uh, royal daughter and, and myself and, and the rest of us, like, you can't, we cannot. Uh, be slaves because we made in his image. So the true us was praising our creator because praises, he's the one that calls us to praise. 
But the enemy wants, again, to see, deceive us in thinking that he was the one that we were praising. And when, again, when we start coming out of this deep sleep, out of this deeper coma, out of this trauma, gradually coming out to those 400 years, they had to admit those 400 years were up. And, and, and we are doing what we're doing now. It's like, and so then they start what? All AT double hockey break loose again to make us think that he's still winning. He ain't winning. He ain't never won. <laughs> and that's again, you so uh, let me slow down. <laughs> okay, the other one was teach it to your children. Who was teaching it to their children? And we couldn't, we could hardly teach it to our children, but what they do to us, they separated us, our children from us, our parents, our elders. And so the stuff that was being taught were the ones who usurped the power. And then again, our Bible is telling us what he did when he usurped the authority and the power over the most highest people, the most highest children. But now we're reversing that. It's just, just do the opposite. Just go back the other way and see what he did. What, what the, this famous philosopher said, we have to learn, unlearn the lies and relearn the truth. And that's what we're doing. And so it's, it's, it's a challenge, but you know, it ain't that much of a challenge anymore because we know, we know who we are. And we recognize the, the deception of the enemy, even in the Bible, what he has done to our book of the law. And the other thing that when I was looking for, uh, you know, when I started studying after I downloaded uh, the copy online, it said the book of the law uh, by Crowley. And y'all know who he is, right? <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute, I don't, that's not the one I've that I want <laughs> but see again side by side like I've been saying you know it's a parallel universe but again the one parallel is slowly fading away and so again he's making us afraid of what's happening in the in the heavenlies with the sun okay again go back to Genesis and then compare Genesis with the end of the book, Revelation, the revelation of the true, mighty, only righteous, holy creator of the heavens and the earth is revelation. That's what's being revealed. Okay. When, when I was in Christianity, I thought that revelation was of Jesus. Well, he's being revealed too, who he really is. So anyway, it says that in the new heavens and the new earth, there will be no need of the sun as we know it, that, that, that ball of fire in the, in the, in, because the light came first. He spoke light over darkness and light was. And that's the only light we need for growth and dominion in the earth realm. So, but again, because the enemy came in and usurped the power in the beginning, and said his light was necessary. But now they're telling us all kinds of things. You can, you can get a grow light, you know, and grow your stuff in the, in, in the house. And how they figured it out, growing marijuana in the house once it, they start attacking it in the fields. So anyway, it's like all these things that you see how through just everyday life, the enemy, what does it say? Um, change the laws and the times and and now the most high is like that was a deception he cannot because he didn't make the law he didn't make the creator he didn't make time and so he doesn't have authority in that and so that's what we have to remember so miracles quote unquote are things that are happening according to the original creation so again one of the things the most high was teaching me still teaching me about uh, miracles and about walking in the light he says now that you 
know that you are in the light, then walk in that light. And so we were supposed to, we were and are and will maintain in the earth realm, in these uh, clay vessels, as though we are in the heavenlies. The scripture says, uh, as, as it is above, so it is, okay, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, where's the kingdom? The kingdom is in within us. It's not without. So anything that we're doing or manifesting in the natural is from the spiritual world, and that should be normal, not a miracle. So when, when miracles are happening, we're just operating the way we're supposed to have, operate. It's only a miracle to those people who don't know that that's what you're supposed to be doing. So anyway, um, and then the other thing was, um, I the definition I looked up at the beginning was void, which is still, um, same, has the same meaning, but it should have been vain. And and again, these, these words, these English words, were words that, again, the French, the Greek, they came up with this because that's what they heard and that's what they were trying to figure out uh, from our people who was walking super, quote unquote, supernaturally or walking according to their divine creation. Their div we were divine creators and we're still that. And so that's why we have to uh, uh, continually to learn uh, the root of these English words so that when we hear the um, the original language, we can understand because again, it has to do with vibration and the sound and what they hear. They, I think, I think, uh, royal daughter said they can't hear. They can't hear what we hear. They don't have ears to hear like we hear. But they have again tried to deceive us. That's the big deception. That we weren't here. What did he say? Did did he did he really say that? Did you really hear him say that if you listen to me, that you going to die? You see, I, it's the same thing. It's the same thing right now. I mean, these people, you know, these beings, whatever they are, they're not people. <laughs> uh, somebody had a, a question on the one of the YouTube's that I think it's. I'm not going to say her name, but anyway, she says, um, are there humans or beasts? Are we humans or beasts? And it tells you in, in Genesis, who's who? We are human and they are beasts, but they want to make us think that we are beasts, that we eat cannibals. That's why, you know, my thing about eating meat, it's like, Whoa. anyway, uh, grafted back in. Uh, the northern kingdom, um, Abram's children who were increased, but not by the promise. They were increased of the flesh. And it tells us that in the Brit uh children of the flesh, but not of promise. Hagar's children. These are the ones who are deceived. They are so deceived that they think that they are in charge. But this mercy and this grace here now to the very last second is for them. And, and, and for us and, 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 and us not so much because we have been studying, like uh, Matoli said, you know, we've read the scriptures. We read the scriptures when we were in the, in the religions. We were trying to study. We were trying that call was in us. But then you have other people who they ain't read nobody's scripture. They ain't listen to the past. Well, they listen to the past or some of them. And some of them weren't even listening to him correctly. So they say, you know, well, oh, that was a good sermon. Well, what did he preach? Uh, well, uh, it was good. <laughs> so this, all these things are coming to not, you know, Anything that's not of the Most High's original voice and law is coming to naught. And um, 
And so that's again why uh, that scripture says we cannot take his name in vain. And we're learning that by correcting our English language, grammar, and understanding of that, uh, and all those things, and 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 affecting. And again, I don't think so much as what we're saying. I think it's the the vibrations in the words, because it's the most high speaking through us with the language that we do know. And and those like that, those people that called in. It's like they they hear that vibration, that sound. It's not so much uh, uh, our, like uh, Montezola says, it's no, not so much our ability as uh, students of the word that's causing that, but it's the what's coming through us. We are the vessels that these sounds are coming through us. Another example that I listened to was about the sounds and the vibration it says they took the tree they take, they make the drums out of these trees that are hollow, and remember that the tree is a natural thing that the Most High has created, and the skin that they put over there is a natural thing that the Most High has made it has made. And they, um, uh, when they, and this is one thing that I'm learning about the cult is that when they take these things in from nature, they get permission. They don't just go and saw down the tree and said, oh, this is a nice wood. I'm gonna make me a nice drum. They, they, they respect the creations that the Most High have made and the spirit that they contain. And that is so important because if we don't respect nature, then we're not respecting ourselves because we're part of nature. So anyway, this is so awesome and, 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 and learning to uh, understand spirituality uh, on a deeper level from inside uh, uh, through this word. And and this book of the law is like, I was so, I was like, I read it and then I said, okay, let me, let me see if I can find uh, something so I can do my, my study, my word study and, and break down and all that. And it's like, but they, that's not even the, they're not giving the exact scripture from the book of the law. I was like, where is that? And then, then I remember when I first learned that was in, uh, when I first learned the commandments, that was the first one that, one of the ones that I learned. But the teacher was, her name was Miss Coleman. I was in uh, second grade, but because our classroom was so large, um, I got put in with the third and fourth graders. And she used to write, the commandments on the board every day and we had to learn. I mean, she wrote in cursive because I've learned about cursive as one of their things to curse us. But anyway, <laughs> she would write that on, on the blackboard and that was uh, the, one of the first the commandments of the, the Lord thy God is a jealous God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Do not take his name, the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I mean, I remember that from way back then and there was a time I could quote it verbatim from how she wrote it. And I can see it right now in my mind's eye. It's just so amazing. The scripture that says, train up a child and point him in the direction that he should go. And when he is old, older, as he matures, he will not depart from that. And that's what I was saying about how, uh, what we are and why, you know, how we've come together on this platform because of that very principle, you know, and, and how we got through the religion and how the Most High just kept at us. It's like, mm, something ain't right with this, something ain't right with this, you know. And you you can, you still try to maintain some uh, form of respect for where you were in, in so-called leadership. But when you did, then they rebuked you and, and, <laughs> and said all manner of things against you because you were doing what, they said you should have been doing that, but anyway, praise the Most High for where we are, and praise Sanini, Nanini, Tata Anzama, all of the uh, Bantu words that we know that uh, refer to the true creator of heaven and earth, and uh, learning the meanings, the true meanings of the language that we are going to be speaking. Uh, no curses, no more language of curses. Uh, <laughs>
Thank, in Geta. Thank you so in Geta. much. In Geta. So in Geta. Much. In Geta. Thank you so much. In Geta. This has been wonderful, yeah. Matabi. I mean, this is really on fire. The Holy Spirit let me know I better not miss a, <laughs> a samba. Not with the book of the law because there's so much knowledge coming out, and everybody on here brought um, a piece of food to eat off the um, table, you know, of the almighty uh, Tata Nzambi uh, Isolele. Um, uh, oh, this is just wonderful. And uh, I would like to thank everybody on here for their, um, for the Holy Spirit and the Miranda uh, working through each and every one of us. I have came through here and it's been just um, awesome. It's been on fire. This is just, this uh, teaching is on fire. And I knew it was gonna be on fire because the spirit is moving in here and it will continue to move on as we move forward because the knowledge is coming forth. And this is not by our will, it's the will of the most high, the creator of the universe, the, the creator that brought everything into being. So in him, we move and we have our being. Without him, we're nothing, you know? So in him, I move, I have my being. So I'm learning so much, even though I'm going through a lot, spiritual warfare, physical warfare, it's okay, because um, I'm built for it and I'm going to be strong through it. But um, as we uh, go through and keep, continue on in this knowledge of wisdom, I just thank um, Tata and Ngeta. Thank you so much, Mama Crystal. Thank you so much for your encouraging words.